What is the sweet spot for how many lenses you need in your camera kit? A purist might say one, a mathematician might say three, and a Marxist might say none. Now this answer may be different depending on what camera you own. I believe if you're a Leica M photographer, the answer to how many lenses you'll ever need is four. Now, I wanna be clear right off the bat, I'm not saying you need these four lenses, I'm saying there's four types of lenses that you need to have in your kit. I'm just gonna share the four that I decide to go with. You need that, that one hero lens, right? That one lens that is your favorite focal length. It has an aperture range that gives you a ton of latitude. It's the one that you're gonna use the most often and it delivers a result um, a look that that caters to the work that you're doing. For me, this lens happens to be the Sumalux 35 millimeter spherical, where even though it was released in September of 2022, I ended up putting the most images through it. It gave me a result and a look and an experience that exceeded anything else I think on the market for the work that I'm doing. And I've talked about this lens in the past, and while this lens doesn't have to be your exact lens in your kit, the feeling should be there, that, right? That, that, that in any environment, day or night, whether it's you know quick, whether it's more controlled, that you have this one lens that you can use in any situation, that you can count on it, and you just know how to use. You know how to get the best out of this thing. If you're asking me, the first lens in your kit, it just has to be a workhorse. You know, it, it just has to be able to show up and get the job done. Robin is always getting his ass in trouble. You know what I mean? It's just making more headache for Batman. You know who Batman's real sidekick is? It's Alfred, it's Alfred. So if we have that one hero lens, we don't need Robin, we need Alfred. There's inevitably gonna be these times with your M camera where you feel like, ah, if I could just get a little bit wider or get a little bit tighter. And taking a poll of that over time, I think that informs what your next lens should be. You know, for me, there were a lot of situations, especially those that weren't in my hometown, where when I was out and about, I just felt like, ah, if I could just get a little bit wider, if I could just get a few more into the frame, it'd be perfect. And that's what made the decision for what my second lens was gonna be. The second lens, it has to give you a little bit of utility that your first couldn't. And it's also not a type of utility that you're gonna be in or requiring most of the time, but it happens often enough. So it made sense that the Alfred to my Batman in this analogy would be the Sumacron 28mm f2.0, the modern version of this lens, where it gave me a wider field of view. I wasn't gonna be using this in a lot of nighttime situations. It was more for daytime photography in tighter spaces where I can layer and just get more into the frame. And this was just a phenomenal piece to have for that kind of work. What I feel this lens brings to me is that it complements the first lens, right? Where I would use the first lens more times than not, but if I knew I was gonna be in a place where I didn't have as much latitude for framing my subject, or if there was gonna be a bit more chaos in what's happening in front of me, that a 28 would lend itself to that kind of environment. So when you're thinking about what your second M lens should be, I think you go with something that's close in focal range distance to what your first lens is, but you either go wider or tighter depending on where you find yourself capturing your material, where you find yourself, well, where you find your photography taking you. If I'm being honest, I think most people are fine with two M lenses. Like, I don't wanna be the person that's talking you off a ledge here, but, you know, to justify a third and fourth lens, I think you have to be shooting often. You have to be shooting regularly uh, to justify the price of entry. But let's say you do shoot often, you do shoot regularly, or you're just a collector. I think the third lens, you gotta introduce a little bit of a challenge. Let's just call it the challenge lens. I think the third lens is your challenge lens, where it gives you a very different perspective, maybe really wide, or really telephoto, and it is something that is a bit more intentional and difficult to use, but it gives you a very different result than your previous two selections. It's something that demands more of effort from you. 
more of an effort from you. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. For me, the challenge lens was the Sumerit 90mm f2.5. While out of production, this is still something that remains quite affordable and was such a departure from the popular line of focal ranges. It's f***ing hard to range focus with this lens and landing your composition is an exercise in patience. But the results are worth it. You can capture these detail shots discreetly where the manual focus throw is quick to move from near to infinity. Oh, and with a modern Leica, you can even use a Visoflex to make composition and focusing significantly easier. If you're capturing regularly and you can justify a third lens in your M kit, I think you go with something that's challenging, that's different, that's very strikingly different from your existing kit. It's not something you'll use as much as the previous two lenses, but when you do, it does give you a bit of a departure from what you'd normally capture and even test you along the way. If you're asking me, the fourth lens in your kit, you gotta do a bit of time travel. You gotta go back in time because Leica is unique, right? They, they have a rich, deep history of lenses and glass. You have the luxury to go real far back and get something that is gonna be entirely unique. So if you're looking at the fourth lens in your M kit, I think it has to be a vintage lens. Why not go back in time and grab something that feels like the antithesis, antithesis of a modern Leica lens? Sort of a, a f you lens, you know what I mean? This thing that just doesn't care to be the most sharp, the most controlled, uh, the most color accurate even. Something that just feels like it has its own personality. The one that I went with was the Leica Sumerit 50mm f1.5. This old lens, this one was made in the 50s. The glass coating shows its age, and in case you ever forgot it was old, it starts to creak when you focus at certain distances. And you know what? I think that's what makes it special. It's an imperfect, unpredictable, and even temperamental lens. You have an idea of what it might do, but you never really know until you shoot it. In the right environment though, like a warmly lit studio with a ton of brass, it just shines and it gives you these shots with a ton of character. So again, if you're shooting a lot, you're capturing a lot and you wanna add something, you, you stay on this, this journey of differentiation and you get something that is vintage, that is gonna give you a result that I would argue is hard to find anywhere else. Before I wrap up this video, I have to give a shout out to our sponsor of this video, and that is Moment. Go to shopmoment.com, check out their gear, check out their classes, check out their presets. They are building an amazing collection of creative tools and services, but also empowering creators like me along the way. These are genuine individuals that really care about that creative journey. So whether it is that new camera, that new lens, or a course, or LUTs, whatever it may be, go to shopmoment.com. And if you're unsure, if you have some questions, use the live chat where you can talk to an expert to help find what you need. Again, that's shopmoment.com. Check out the link below for more details. Now, of course, this is entirely subjective from the three years of owning an M camera of some kind. These are the experiences that I'm having. And I think that's what you're here for, right? Is for me to go on this journey, to have these experiences, to formulate an opinion, to share it with you, and then open it up for dialogue, right? That's, that's what we're here for. So with that said, let me know what you think. And, and I should also say that if you're making it to this part of the video, you're getting much further along than most. And I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel and supporting the journey. I, I think you're gonna enjoy the exciting things that I have planned for the rest of the year. So yeah, if you're not subscribed already, subscribe to the channel. Let me also say that if you made it this far, check out the Church and Street newsletter. I started this little club. It's two emails a month and there's gonna be more things that come out of it. If you're into photography, if you are a photographer and you love photography, I think this is something that you're gonna enjoy and really look forward to in your inbox. So again, check out the link, all the details are there. Anyway, that is enough for one video. Look, I appreciate you making it this far. The, the year is already blasting by. I'm excited for the content that we have planned. And you know, I've just been thinking, about, I just appreciate you uh, 
allowing me to be a small piece of content on your journey. So I hope you're finding fulfillment in the year. I hope you're putting a ton of reps on your camera, a ton of mileage on your camera gear. Um, and yeah, I just, I hope you're enjoying the journey as much as I am. So with all that said, as always, my name is Gadget. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.